Hey guys, Willie here with WTF Car Reviews and we're going to be reviewing the all new 2025 Acura MDX Type S Advanced. And a big thanks to Lauren at Moss Acura in Tampa, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to her inventory below and if you're looking for a new premium car or SUV in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Lauren. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Type S has been a well needed high performance model for the already fantastic Acura MDX since 2022. Exclusive to the fourth generation MDX that you see here, and for 2025, the MDX gets a facelift, which we just went over in our review of the relatively base tech trim that we just reviewed in this channel. And here we have the complete opposite of a base, the top of the line Type S Advance, which still gets a tweaked front and rear styling in its own way. Acura's new 12.3 inch touchscreen, which ditches the hated trackpad and a new booming 31 speaker Bang & Olsen audio system, which quite literally shakes your skull. Sitting on the top of the MDX lineup for performance, luxury, and price, with a base price right under 75,000 bucks. What else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So we mentioned the MDX for 2025 gets a tweaked front bumper, tweaked grille. The lights are just about the same, still the Jewel Eye LEDs with the LED daytime running lights. We get the Jewel Eye fog lights down below too. Radiator up top, intercooler down below, trans and differential coolers in the corners, really aggressive performance SUV. We have Type S in the right corner of the grill area. The S is red, everything else is blacked out. A massive Acura badge up front housing our advanced safety features. We have this gray metallic paint color too. It's about a $600 option here. I'll leave a link show you the exact name of the color. Full front parking sensing and a forward facing camera which helps us out with the 360. The wheel and tire setup is Type S specific and they're aggressive. Black and silver contrasted, 21 inch rims wrapped in Continental Cross Contact RS all season tires, but they're more of a three season tire, a pretty aggressive all season. We're next to the Porsche and BMW dealership, so you'll hear some pretty cool cars flying around during this review. Anyway, the dimensions up front are 27540 R21. I believe it's a square setup, we'll check that out out rear, and a Brembo. Acura brake caliper. It's a four piston up front, single piston out rear. Black trim, it's gloss black for the wheel well and rocker panel. Side skirt area, type S in the upper right part of the fender area. Blacked out mirrors, LED turn signal on them, blind spot monitoring not on the glass, but we still get it on the inside part of the mirror housing. All black trim for the window trim, blacked out roof rails and a massive panoramic moonroof, shark fin style antenna. Smart access for all four doors, not quite sure where all these noises are back here. But I'll take a step back. Hopefully you guys can pick up the side profile on this beautiful 2025 Acura MDX Type S Advance, which at the end of the day is starting to get up there in price, but there isn't a feature that this thing doesn't have. Power pull, twin turbo V6, air suspension, and quite literally every option and feature for the interior with a 31 speaker Bang & Olsen audio system. We get four door smart access, as we mentioned. Push to open gas cap with easy fill, premium fuel, is recommended, but it does say 87 octane for the minimum requirement. Same rear wheel and tire setup. The only difference is a single piston brake caliper. Same dimensions for the cross contacts, 27540 R21. Hopefully you can pick it up on camera. Still with that gloss black trim for the wheel well area and the rear bumper, we get more gloss black for the upper part of the rocker panel area and the upper part of the rear bumper. Full LED for the taillights, Type S underneath it, full rear parking sensing, super handling all wheel drive in the lower right corner, MDX above it, blacked out Acura badge, LED third brake light, and a really aggressive quad exhaust setup with a pretty aggressive diffuser between it. But speaking of the quad exhaust tips, let's fire up this three liter twin turbo V6 and hear how she sounds. Alright guys, that was the sound of the 3 liter twin turbo 6 cylinder sold by Acura for the 2025 MDX Type S. And it sounds pretty good, at least for the induction part of it. I guess we'll see how the exhaust comes out on video. But at least inside, it sounds very good, cranking out 355 horsepower, 354 pound-feet of torque, 
mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission and all-wheel drive system. You can expect this SUV to get to 60 in the mid 5 second range, making it very competitive with the segment, just not really beating any part of the segment outside of value. But speaking of value, this Type S is really only available, or this power plant is only available with the top Type S Advance now, which has a base price of over $73,000. And in my opinion, that is creeping up there. I really wish Acura made this engine an option on anything from the tech and up, at least with the super handling all-wheel drive models. If you can get this engine in around a $60,000 MDX, I think that would be probably the best value three-row luxury SUV on the road today. But even here with a $74,000 base price, this is fully, fully loaded. There is not an option in this SUV that you do not get the air intake. Acura style recently, we do not get an air filter, at least not on the outside. I'm sure there's something going on either behind the turbochargers or the bottom of this whole intake system. The hydraulic struts are appreciated. We can shut this hood right down, take a step back, walk around this 2025 Acura MDX Type S. One more time, let's take a step inside and see what we get with a fully, fully loaded 2025 top of the line MDX. We'll set, the, we'll set these lights back to auto so the car's not yelling at me. We get soft touch materials up top, leather stitching, or not leather stitching, aluminum underneath it with some illumination, genuine wood, aluminum door handle, three person memory seats, red leather for the center area, and it's genuine leather all throughout. I believe it's called merino leather, but we'll check that out on the window sticker. It's a very premium material. We get two Bang & Olsen speakers here on the front door panel, one of your, or two of your 36 speakers. The entire system over here, the entire pillar system is covered in speakers. Four window auto one touch, power folding mirrors, four way adjustable, trunk release, solid storage, just hard plastic down below. You'll stack two six inch subs and a big gulp right in front of it. We get a Type S illuminated nameplate as we step inside. We get the merino leather with suede Alcantara contrasted, perforated, heated and ventilated Type S etched in the headrest and they're fully adjustable seats. You can recline them, drop, lift and slide with four-way lumbar control and adjustable bolsters. But taking a step inside, we can really check it out. So we'll foot on the brake, engine start, stop and everything fires right to life. So as we brought it up several times, this is a fully loaded vehicle in here. You think of an available feature and I guarantee that this SUV has it. The steering wheel is thick, red contrast stitching, perforation all throughout the sides, perfect nine and three, fat 10 and two, aluminum paddle shifters, flat bottom, aluminum frame two, tight pass underneath, horn area is rubberized, horn itself, loud and aggressive. We get dual pane windows up front and we get dual pane windows on all MDXs out rear for 2025 premium touch. You can turn off your media, heated steering wheel, volume and skip, voice commands you can return and adjust the menu. These buttons over here on the left side, if you have the heads up display turned off, adjust the left side of the digital gauge display. But right now we have our digital or heads up display turned on, so hopefully you can pick up the adjustments on camera. There we go. Looks like it centered itself. Menu, digital speedo is very crisp. You can adjust the menu content, the display content. Let's see what can be adjusted. Speed and traffic sign recognition, driver assistance, navigation, also cool, but we're not gonna be using navigation. So we'll leave it in speed and traffic sign recognition for the purpose of this review. There we go, now we're zoomed out. On the right side, we have our lane keep assist, radar cruise control, regular cruise control adjustments, and our adjustments for the right side of the infotainment system or digital gauge display. Right now we're looking at power distribution, G meter, attention levels, seat belts, blank screen, safety support, overall settings, trip computer, Google Maps display, that's a premium touch, maintenance, tire pressure, and our power distribution. My personal favorite screen would either be the power distribution or the map. So we'll leave it there. We get our MDX in the center. You can see your brake lights. You can see your turn signals. We'll see if we can check out our reverse lights. Nope, but we do get our front and rear parking sensing with the 360 in the infotainment cluster. We mentioned the aluminum paddle shifters. The stocks have a very satisfying click. Auto headlamps, auto high beams, and fog lights on the right. Auto rain sensing wipers also to be expected. Power tilt and telescoping steering column. Interior brightness, you can turn off your parking sensors, traction control 360 sense. You can adjust the heads up display brightness. And you can adjust the heads up display location. All leather stitching for this dashboard area. Electron parking brake and hopefully get a good look at the aluminum outline pedals. Very premium feel. All leather stitching for the dashboard. We brought up the heads up display. Massive speaker in the center. 
and that leather stitching continues all throughout with a little bit of piano black running through the center. The 12.3 inch touchscreen is all new for 2025. We already reviewed it on the tech, so we're not gonna go into too much detail. The response is excellent. It's close to you. And the fact that we don't have that ridiculous trackpad allows us to have a lot more usable space in the center stack. Our map, let's check it out. It's a Google Maps display. The response is just about perfect. One of the best overall systems in the business. And unlike BMW or some of the other German competition, or even some of the new Japanese competition, we still get full hard buttons for the climate display or climate control, heated and ventilated front seats, and a three zone climate control. Hazards in the center, aluminum stick running through the air vents, dynamic mode, this is our drive mode selector. We get sport, normal, comfort, snow, lift mode, and we can turn and hold to activate Sport Plus, which makes the exhaust sound a little bit more aggressive. Doesn't make a huge difference, but that's the mode we're gonna start off in. Try out Comfort and just see what the differences are. We can see what else is available through this display. You guys can pause, take a look, all the adjustments. On the right side, you can adjust between song, compass, clock, and our trip computer with average fuel economy. We've been spending a lot of time idling, so don't take that too seriously. Of course, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But again, my personal favorite screen would be the map, so we'll leave it there. More leather stitching, wood beneath it, brought up the air vents, brought up the climate control, the gear selector right here, just buttons, just like the fourth generation and third generation towards the end MDX has been for quite some time. Drive and sport mode for the transmission, we'll check out both. Backup camera, super high resolution, guidance lines and trajectory with the over the top 360 we get here on the Type S. You can get the wider view, still keeping the 360. You turn off the trajectory for one reason or another and adjust the brightness, awesome. Not quite sure what else the adjustments would be, but throwing right back into park, we'll return right back to the previous screen. You turn off the auto engine start stop, electron parking brake with brake hold, See your charge ports, USB-A and C port behind it. Our volume and skip control, leather stitching for where your knee will often hit, nice storage compartment, wireless phone charging pad, two cup holders, you'll fit 32 ounce bottles with these pushy things to keep the drinks in place. Soft red merino leather armrest too, really premium. Coin slot, business cards, pens, car accessories. And beneath it, we have a pretty spacious console. I'd expect you to fit probably 10 to 12 12 ounce bottles in there with two USB C ports. The glove box is soft touch on the outside, aluminum latch, damped, and lino felt very well damped. It's large too, you'll fit 25 license plates, easily fit two pairs of shoes, frameless auto dimming rear view mirror, three garage home link settings on it. It's not a digital rear view mirror, that's the one feature that we do not have here so far in this SUV. The interior lights are LED, sunglass holder, we can open up the shade for this panoramic moonroof. It's not a very sunny day today in Florida at all, but the rain is cooperating. Shade opens up decently quickly. Once the shade opens up, we can open up the roof. The glass goes on top of the second panel, so it does stick out a little like a sore thumb. See if it goes out any further, it does. So well into the second row, one of the largest openings in the business. We can poke our way out of here. As you mentioned, cloudy day, but for the most part, pretty nice, 91 degrees according to this 2025 MDX Type S. We'll shut the glass right up, leave the shade open, so when we hop out back, hopefully you guys can pick up some of the light brought into the cabin thanks to the massive panoramic moonroof. That's about it though, guys, for the front seat at least of 2025 MDX Super Handling All-Wheel Drive Type S Advanced with the liquid carbon metallic paint color, red interior, $74,950 base price, 600 bucks for the paint, you guys can pause, take a look at all the standard features. This thing is loaded with them. $1,350 for the destination and handling charge, totaling us out a tick under $77,000. Fuel economy, you'll average a tick under 20 MPGs. So overall, a loaded SUV, solid on fuel, solid performer, and in my opinion, just about as good of a looking midsize three-row SUV as you're gonna get. I think it's a better looker than an X7. I think it's a better looker than a Q7. And compared to an X7, you're saving 15, 20,000 bucks, even with this fully, fully loaded package. But taking a step out back, I'm sure we mentioned we get the smart access out rear and the dual pane windows, sun shades, we can close them up. And I'll prove to you guys the dual pane windows right over here. It is actually starting to rain. 
So we'll hurry up this review as much as possible. Soft touch, unlike the Pilot, but to be expected with a $75,000 base price SUV. We get some aluminum trim with interior illumination, genuine wood beneath it, aluminum door handle, two more banging Olsen speakers, more merino leather, gushy soft armrests, auto one touch, everything. Solid storage, you will fit a 10 inch sub up front with a big gulp behind it, a type S illuminated nameplate, as we step inside the rear seats, not very bolstered, just like on the tech we reviewed in this channel, but they're perforated, heated seats, not ventilated out rear. At this price point, the ventilated seats in the rear would be appreciated considering vehicles like the Palisade on their top calligraphy trims do offer it. But they're not technically captain's chairs because there is a middle seat, but the middle seat's also removable and it folds down to be one of the most comfortable center armrest in the business. So I will consider this an adjustable captain chair setup where you have an available center seat if need be, where you can also leave it in the garage if you don't need it. Anyway, the legroom looks really impressive at a little bit over six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings. I still have about six, seven inches of knee room. We'll see if the seat slides back any further. It does not. Sitting upright, I have about an inch of headroom. Reclining the seat back, I have about two, three inches of headroom, but now I'm down to about two, three inches of knee room as well. But overall, I'm really comfortable back here. Unfortunately, the third row will not be as comfortable for me as the second row, as you guys saw in the tech review. We get a map pocket back here, very solid amount of space, third zone climate control, heated second row seats, air vents, no air vents that blow directly into your face, but we do get console air vents, two USB-C ports, 12 volt. Unfortunately, we do not get an AC outlet next to it as standard. So there are some features that are missing here. The latch to remove the center console seat is right over there. Hopefully you can pick it up on camera and the latch to lift the seat back up right over here in the corner. We can lift the seat up just so you guys can see what it looks like in the center, but that's about it for the second row at least for the 2025 MDX. The interior lights back here are not actually activated at the moment, but they are LED. Ton of light bro into the cabin if it was a sunny day today in Tampa, Florida, but again, what you see is basically what we get. We can hop out into the third row, see how much space is offered back there. There's a button to shoot the second row seat forward, lift this latch up. It's not a power opening or activating third row. Unfortunately, for this price point, that would be appreciated, but we figured it out. It wasn't the toughest process. Hopping back here with the seats all the way in their furthest back setting, just like in the tech, my knees are starting to touch. My head is also starting to touch. But if the second row passenger compromised about two inches of their knee room, I would be able to sit back here relatively comfortably. Compared to the MDXs of the past, this is definitely more spacious compared to the third, second, first gen. But compared to any pilot that I've reviewed in this channel, this is without question a smaller back seat. We get a USB-A port, cup holder back here too. Same thing on the opposite side, the interior lights back here. Also not activated just like up front. I'm sure there's a button that I need to press. Everything of course being LED. We'll press this button in the corner again. Seat shoots forward. We have an air vent underneath that blows to our feet, but nothing that blows to our face. But still, there are a couple features that I mentioned that we don't have like the power third row. We don't have ventilated second row seats. We don't have a power outlet in the second row. But outside of that, I can't think of any features that are not available here. We can press this button to open up the lift gate. It gives you a couple seconds to take a step back so you don't have to worry about getting doofed in the head. And overall, hopefully you can pick up how much space is back here with the third row up. I'll leave a link with the third row up, third row down, and with the second row down. But speaking of third row down, let's drop it down so you guys can see what the trunk looks like with the floor mats down. So very spacious. Again, one of the class leaders for the mid-size three row segment is just for the actual usable third row space. Definitely not the class leader. We get some secret storage underneath. This is where our battery kit and fix a flat kit is. Same thing underneath over here. You also get a funnel in the corner and I believe a jack, but with the self-sealing tires here in the Type S, they may have actually omitted the jack, but pretty solid amount of secret storage back here. I can see you fit in four or five backpacks, maybe two carry-on suitcases. Definitely impressive. You fold the second row seats down 40, 40, 20. I would expect you to fit probably an 85 to 90 inch TV back here because the wheel wells do not protrude very far. You can hold and set the height so the shorter drivers can make the trunk not open as high so you don't have to jump up in the air to press the button to close it. But we can close it right up. It gives you about a second, second and a half to take a step back so if you're holding grocery bags again, you don't get doofed 
in the head. But that's about it though, guys, for the inside and outside. It's all new, facelifted, top of the line 2025 Acura MDX Type S. It is a beautiful SUV, both inside and out. Absolutely loaded with features. And again, in my opinion, one of the best looking midsize three row SUVs, not only out on the road today, but ever released on the road. And performance wise, being the top performing MDX ever, let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all new 2025 Acura MDX Type S Advanced. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. Starting off with the sport transmission activated. Let's see what it's got. Sensitive throttle. Oh, where's my hand going over there? But yeah, sensitive throttle, steering feels good. And we get that extra rumble coming in with, I'm not sure if it's the exhaust or the induction, but either way, it sounds good. Real world turning radius. Acura always starts us off in second gear, but on the gas. Whew. Get a nice turbo whistle, strong feeling grunt. We'll try out these paddles. Hopefully it lets us use second. There we go, second gear, throwing it in. Sharp, good handling on the gas. Whew, we catch up to traffic quick. Brakes feel really good too, the Brembos. Sharp downshifts with this 10 speed. As soon as we get the chance, we'll try out some passing power. Looks like we have the chance. Woo! Jeez, this thing can rip. Snappy shifts, puts you in your seat, and it takes off. Is it going to be beating BMW X5s when it comes to acceleration? No, but it is surprisingly close. It feels more luxurious in the interior. Ton of torque. No MDX has ever had torque anywhere close to what this one has. Just zip around traffic like nothing. It feels like something that would have a BMW badge or at least an AMG badge. That's probably more what this feels like. It feels more like an AMG Mercedes than it really feels like something that you would get from BMW. And come on, that's definitely not a bad thing necessarily. The advanced safety features, you can see the blind spot monitoring working, give these guys a little bit of space. On the gas. It feels strong and I like the way that this motor sounds in Sport Plus. It is quiet on the highway. You do hear a little bit of road noise on the concrete pavement, but that's what it takes. It takes concrete pavement and serious speed just to hear a hint of road noise. Wind noise with a dual panes front and rear, you hear nothing. We could take it out of Sport mode try it out in comfort mode and just see the differences are normal mode will be a balance between the two comfort i can immediately feel that the throttle is a lot more numb we'll take the transmission out of its sport mode brakes actually feel a little bit more numb too i guess the brake pedal is electronically controlled we can take a step out here comfort mode about third throttle it takes a second for the power to really kick in, but once it does, it still feels type S levels of strong. About half throttle, yeah, just it takes a second. But again, it still does get up and go. Let's try it out in normal mode. We'll finish it off in normal mode. Make sure we are good. We are taking a step out here on the gas. Ooh, yeah, normal mode's a nice balance between comfort and sport. I would recommend leaving it in normal mode. With the turbocharged power plant, comfort mode kind of shows off this vehicle's potential turbo lag by numbing the throttle and making the turbo just wait a little bit longer for it to spool up. Whereas normal mode, it's a little bit more sensitive, a little bit less turbo lag. Obviously, sport mode, you're gonna have the most aggressive everything. If you're trying to show off to your friends, definitely leave it in sport. But if you're trying to have a more engaging drive while still keeping the luxurious feel, I would recommend leaving it in normal mode. If you're in the city, you're trying to maximize fuel economy, you don't really care about throttle response, yes, go with comfort, but normal still gives you a really comfortable experience. Just check it out. You don't hear anything. No road noise, no wind noise. Looks like a good opportunity to try one out off the line. I'll catch back with you and we can wrap things up. Off the line in normal mode, whoo! Definitely not as aggressive 
as sport, but as you see, this thing gets up and goes quick. You run over these bumps, you feel nothing with this air suspension, you hear nothing. Unbelievable luxury car. The MDX has always been the best value luxury car for the money, on the road, whatever you like to call it, but it's just never been the performer that you're looking for if you're trying to compete it with something like a BMW X5 or even an Audi Q7. Not anymore. But this twin turbocharged six cylinder, it rips. Zero to 60 in the mid five second range, ride quality with this air suspension that'll rival $100,000 German vehicles. And that's legitimate. This is such a great luxury performance SUV, sub $75,000, which I understand is creeping up there in price. But outside of a couple nitpicky options and features, it has everything that you can possibly want or need. If that's what you're looking for, guys, I would 100% recommend checking out the 2025 Acura MDX Type S Advanced. And a big thanks to Lauren and the rest of the management and staff here at Moss Acura in Tampa, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new premium car or SUV in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Lauren. And a huge thanks to all you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too, it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, that's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment, let me know what you like, let me know what you don't like, leave a comment, let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you wanna see reviewed on this channel, and I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope all of you have a great day.